There are many different types of tests for COVID-19, antigen, uh, antibody, and PCR tests, the ones that most people have heard of. With increased demand and long wait times, many people are asking which one they should get or which is the most accurate. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain what makes one of them the gold standard and how it works. Doc. Yeah, Kim and Devin. So infection, one where the person is still contagious, uses a swab from the back of the nose, the nose itself, or saliva. Now, the accuracy of the test will depend on how well that sample was collected and the test that is being used. The best test is a PCR. It's not only the most sensitive, it can also help tell how infectious a person is. The virus that causes COVID-19 is the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Like all viruses, inside is genetic material, RNA in the case of this novel coronavirus. When we swab a person's nose or the nasopharynx further back to get a sample for testing, we get some whole live viruses and some pieces of virus, including some of the genetic material. The first step to testing uses chemicals to destroy any live virus. Then in the next step... You are extracting the viral RNA out of that sample. Let's pause here. At this point, you have the viral RNA from someone's nose. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. Regardless, at this stage, it's not enough to be detected by the machine. That's why the next step is so critical. They'll use different chemicals to make multiple copies of that viral RNA or genetic material. That process is the actual PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. Every time the reaction is done, the number of viral pieces is doubled. So if you started with only five individual viruses, the first cycle you would have 10, the next cycle 20, the next 40, the next 80, and so on until there are enough pieces to detect. Suppose you need 1 million copies before it's visible. Starting with 5, you would only need about 18 cycles to get 1 million. But if you started with 1,000 viral particles, you would only need about 10 cycles. The number of cycles that it takes to turn a sample positive is the cycle threshold. The lower the number, the more virus was in the sample to start with. You can look at this and say that somebody has an extremely high viral load and they're potentially uh, a spreader, they're infectious, they're transmitting virus. Or you can look at it and say that the viral load in the sample is so low that this person is likely not shedding virus anymore. Now, labs don't routinely report the cycle threshold. That's actually something a physician would have to specifically request. But they are used. For example, when Dr. Fauci was evaluating health recovery, he actually commented that the president's cycle threshold was 34.3, which is not technically negative, but it is high enough that he most likely was no longer contagious. I see. So, Frank, how long does it take to run that PCR test? Well, you know, Kim, it depends. There's the specimen processing time and then the actual time on each machine to do the replication cycles. Frankly, it would probably just be easier for me to show you. So coming up at six, I'm going to take you behind the scenes at the Henry Ford Health System main laboratory to really give you an idea of what goes into it. Okay. We'll be looking forward to that. Frank, thank you.